Hello, you all most welcome. Yeah, it's Henry the Computer Guy. And in this video, we're going to be having an introduction to desktop publishing software, but our main focus is going to be on Microsoft Publisher. Actually, before we dive into the real practice, we first of all have to get an understanding of what desktop publishing means and why we exactly need it. Uh, for example, if you plan to create any documents using page layout skills on your personal computer with text, graphics, and brilliant colors, then you definitely need what we call desktop publishing. So that means that we are first of all going to get an understanding of what DTP stands for. So DTP stands for desktop publishing, and it is actually the creation of documents using page layout skills on your personal computer primarily for print. It was first used almost exclusively for printing publications, but now it also assists in the creation of various forms of online content. That means that we still need desktop publishing. What are some of the examples of uh, electronic publications we can do here or documents we can create here? So this can include uh, book covers, we can have a blog cures, catalog, uh, we can have the menu, we can have flyers, magazines, posters, newsletters, we can design certificates here, we can have calendars here, we can have signs and so many others. That means that we still need what we call desktop publishing. So having talked about desktop publishing, we also need to talk about desktop publishing software a little. And this is specifically an application software we can use to design and produce complicated documents that contain text, graphics, and brilliant colors. So the software we are going to be using to design all these publications is what we call the desktop publishing software. By the way, uh, modern word processors have the best features of DTP software, but features like the templates and frames make DTP software better for complex page layouts. So we'll be looking at what we call the templates and the frames when we go to do our practical so what are some of the examples of desktop publishing software? For example, remember in the beginning, we said that we are going to be using Microsoft Publisher as our example. But there are other softwares that we can use. For example, Adobe InDesign, Adobe PageMaker, Adobe FreeMaker. We can have the Quark Express, Corel Draw, and so many others. So that means that you have a variety of the softwares you can use to create these publications. So without wasting any time, we're going to be going to the real practice and see how we can design our publications. So having understood what desktop publishing software is, what we are going to do now is to dive into the real practice and see how we can work with it. But remember, in the beginning, I told you that I'm going to be basing on Microsoft Publisher and the version I'm going to be using is 2007. But we will also be able to make a comparison with other versions, for example, 2010 and uh, 2021. Why am I going to be using uh, 2007 is because uh, most of the schools use 2007 and when you learn how to use 2007, you can always be able to work with all the other versions. So without wasting any time, let me open my Microsoft Publisher 2007. Remember, for my case, I've already pinned it onto my taskbar. So I'm just going to click on it, then it will open for me. So having uh, clicked on it, it will display or it will take us to this section where we have uh, getting started with Microsoft Office Publisher 2007. So it has different sections here. For example, when I begin from the right here, uh, we have the recent publication. For example, I made a certificate for HTV Secondary School and other publications are down here. So you can as well be able to scroll through and they are here. So in the middle here, we have the popular publication types. For example, we can have a blank page size, we can have the blockers, we can have the business cards, calendars, and so many others. So you can always be able to choose uh, the one that you feel you want to work with. Then on the left here, we have what we call the publication types. All the publication types we can have are listed for you here. You can just choose the one you feel that you want to work with. For example, they will begin with the blank page sizes. For example, you want to work with a blank size. Uh, remember, for our case, we are going to work with a blank size, but there are templates that you can actually work with. 
Uh, remember I told you that I was going to explain what a template is. It is actually a document that contains the layout and formatting necessary for a specific document type. It actually has some information already filled in for you. You'll just be able to make changes out of it. So let's look at those templates we have here. For example, if I click on adverts, and uh, adverts, they are going to give me some classic designs for me. So I can just click on this template. Then I modify the information according to my needs. And other blank pages are also listed down here for you in case you don't want to work with this. So let's go to the certificates. They are also here. You choose one, you work with it. We have the banners, we have the blockers, we have the business cards, we have the business form calendars, and so many publications. So I'll not finish all of them, but they are all listed here for you. We can have the signs, we can have the websites, and so many others. So we are not going to work with a template. So we'll be working with what we call a blank page size because we have to learn doing something from scratch. But before we do that, uh, up here, we have what we call Microsoft Publisher getting started. And this is where we began from. So we can be able to choose any blank page size or any template from this section. But down here, we also have what we call My Templates. So if you have already saved a template here, it will be listed under My Templates. But here I haven't saved any template, but we can see how we can save the template and we continue. Because I've already created some certificates here, I can decide to save them as a template such that whenever I need to reuse them, I can always get them from my templates. Let's try this and see. So when I come and click on my templates, they will give me some information that I don't have any templates here. I can decide to save one. Let me click on it and you see. And having clicked on it, uh, it is telling me that you have no templates saved to my templates. To save a publication as a template, choose the publisher template type in the save as dialog box. So let's see how we can uh, save a template. For example, if I click on this one that I've already designed and I want to make it as a template, of course, I will click on it. And having clicked on it, you'll give it some time to load. And this is the certificate that I created for Chitebi Secondary School. It is a good certificate as you look at it. I can decide to save it under my templates such that whenever I need to use it, I can always use it as my template. So what they have told us to do is to come and click on Save As. And when I come to my file, I'll come and select the option that says Save As. When I click on Save As, it is already having a name. Then under the Save As type, I can come and click Publisher Template. So it is going to be saved under My Templates. So I will come and click on Save. So my certificate has been saved under My Templates. So let me first close it and open it again and see whether we can use it as a template. So having closed it, we can reopen uh, Publisher 2007 again. And having opened it, we can come to this section where we have My Templates. And when I come to My Templates, it is already saved here. And I can as well decide to edit this information or delete this template and remain with nothing. So that is how exactly we can work with that as My Template. So let's go back to getting started with Publisher 2007. And remember, I told you that we are going to be working with a blank uh, page size. Let me click on blank page size. And when I click on blank page size, they are going to give me a variety of the pages that are blank. For example, you have the standard, advert, and so many others there. You can decide to pick from these ones up, or you can decide to pick from this section as the standard down here, and more other options are given to you the way you can use them. And this side, we can have uh, this information, and this is actually called the customization pane. If I show you the image here that I created, uh, this side is called the publication type, as we have looked at them here, and this side is called the customization pane. Remember, you can uh, customize this information according to exactly what you want. For example, after selecting your page, these are many different pages that we have here. For my case, I'm going to be using A4 Landscape, and having selected it, I can come and decide to customize it in a way that I feel I want. By choosing the color scheme, for example, I can come here, choose the color scheme. Then after that, I can also choose the default fonts or 
the font I want to use onto my uh, page that I have selected. Then if after choosing the font, I can as well decide to put in some business information by clicking on this option, then click on new, whereby it will take me to this section where I can fill in the information I want to add there as my business information. Add a logo, add your slang or motion, anything you feel you want. So for my case, I'm not going to add this. I'm just going to click on the option that says cancel. So that is it for now. So if you want to use this page, you can come and click on through this uh, option that says create, or you can go back and double click on it. It can work in the same way. So now when we come to this other section, I've already created another item here, which is going to try to explain the interface. When I come up here, this is what we call the minimize. We have the maximize and restore, and we also have the close. That means that if you're done with your publication, you want to close it, then you can always click onto this option. Then up here is where we have what we call the title bar. If we give our publication a name, the name will be listed up here. That's why they are showing you that this one is called the title bar. Then on these options here, we have what we call the menu bar. And on the menu bar, we have the different tabs. For example, we can have the file, the edit, the view, the insert, the format, the tools, table, arrange, window, then the whole. We are going to be working with all of them and you see how simpler they become. Then down here, we have some other two rows and these are called the toolbars. So when you look at this image here, it is combining this one and this one and all those ones are called the toolbars. So we are going to be working with this toolbar and again with this toolbar. And when we come this side here, we have what we call the object toolbar, and it is listing items here that we are going to be working with them. Then here we have what we call the task pen, and the task pen is here. It is going to be helping us to navigate through the changes we are making and see how we can work with them. So I can now minimize this. And having minimized this, I'm going to begin with this section, whereby the first option we are having here is the select object. How are we going to use the select object? When I click on it, of course, it is going to do nothing. Why? Because I'm not having anything onto my page, because this is the page that we are going to be working with. It is doing nothing because I have no objects onto my page. Let me first put any object. For example, when I come to my computer, I can select one image, for example, let me click on Ctrl C. Then I come here, I press Ctrl V, then the image comes to my, my page. So now when I want to select this, that is when I can always use this. For example, if I come to the second option down here as the text box and I click on it, this one will allow me to draw a text box. That means that this text box is going to be allowing me to hold uh, the words that I want to write onto my page. You want to write a word onto your page, you'll always have to look for what we call a text box. And whenever I want to select it, now the selection object will always be active for me. So I'll click here and I write something here. For example, I can write Henry, Henry the computer, Henry the computer guy. But as I write this information, you're going to find out that this information is not all that visible. That means that we have to increase its font. So you can as well be able to highlight or select this information, come to this toolbar, then you can as well be able to increase the size depending on exactly how you want it. Or if this one is also difficult, you can use a keyboard shortcut. Uh, for example, I can press Control combined with my bracket, then it can always be able to increase this uh, font size for me according to exactly how I want it to be. So my word is now visible and the size it's having is 37. If I told you wish to uh, change the size, you can as well highlight it again, come and click onto the size that you want to give it to. Let's say, if I say 48, it will increase. 48. That is how you can be able to increase the size of your items you have put onto your page. Now, uh, number three is going to be the table, and it is telling us that we have to insert the table. Actually, 
how can we insert a table? For example, I have this, let me minimize it a little, then I can always select it and put it uh, here. So when I come and put it there, I can decide to put my table here. For example, by coming to this option that says insert table. And after inserting the table, I'll come and drag where the table is going to be placed. I'll come and highlight where the table will just be put. Then I can decide to put the number of rows and the number of columns that I want to put there. Um, I'll say OK. And having said OK, you're looking at this table. It is not visible. So what are you going to do is to double click on it. And after double clicking on it, you can make more changes onto your table from this section. For example, you can change the size, you can change the height, you can change the width, the rotation, the scale height, and the scale width, even the aspect ratio. Then you can always be able to change the layout. You can always be able to change the cell properties the way you feel you want. But for my case, I'm going to be working with this first option. For example, I can say I want the color for the line to be black. Then I want, uh, for example, to increase the weight such that the borders are visible. Then I can raise command click here. Then I can choose all borders. Then I say, OK, so my table is now visible. Actually, if you don't choose this section, you can as well come to this option where you have the table and insert a table. You can delete a table. You can as well be able to select a table. You can as well decide to merge some cells. For example, I have some cells here I want to combine into one. I can select them. Then come to this option for the table and click on merge cells. So they are going to be combined into one cell. That is what we call the merging of the cells. Then we can also decide to split the cells. We can come and look at the cell diagonals. For example, if I want it here, I can just come and select where I want it. Then I come and say, put the cell diagonal. So they will ask me the diagonal I want to use. Maybe I want to use this. Then I'll say, OK. So it will be inserted for me. So I can undo that by pressing Control Z. Then we come to the next option. Let me remove that table because we have uh, worked with it. So I no longer need it. So another option is what we call the picture frame. So when you click on it, it gives us different options here. For example, you can get a picture from your clip art. You can get a picture from your file. For example, if you have the picture from your computer, you can be able to browse it. Then you can insert an empty picture frame. Then you can always be able to put a picture later. Then you work with it. Then you can also choose from a scanner. So if you don't choose these options here, you can also come to the option that says insert, then come to the option that says picture. They'll give you the same or similar items we've seen there. We want a clip art from file, uh, empty picture frame uh, from, uh, let's say, a scanner from content library. Uh, we're going to be looking at the content library. Uh, then we have the auto shapes. We have word art. So they can as well work for you. So let me come and choose here. Then I can say I want uh, clip art. So I'll just click on it. Then type exactly what I want to put here. For example, I'm going to be putting, let's say, computer. When I type computer, I'll click on the option that says go. So they're going to give me clip as that are related to computer. So in case I wanted to bring this one, I can just hold it, then drag it to wherever I feel I want. So this is what exactly I'm having. So if I told you wanted to get some information from your computer, then you can as well come to the section picture from file. Then you can always be able to browse uh, that. So I'm going to do this, then they can tell me to browse that picture. They say, I have this picture from my computer. I can as well be able to insert the picture. So it will just be given to me just like that. So those are two options that we have worked with. So we have no scanner, so we'll not be working with a scanner. Then I can come and say, insert a picture frame, which is empty. So I'm going to be coming here and insert it also. When you insert it, it will just be here. Then you can always be able to 
put a picture here for your choice by coming to the section and choose either the picture you want you can choose this is the picture from a scanner you can change some color you can make some more contrast you can put some brightness you can even try to crop it you can put some borders there you can decide to uh, compress it and so many other options that you want or you want to work with onto that empty frame actually a frame is a, a rectangular area for inserting text and graphics you can put in text or you can either put in the graphics or the images that you feel you want so now i think i've uh, explained the template and the frame the way i said in the beginning so we can close this one and work with something else let me remove this because i no longer need it i remove this and i can leave that one there let me remove this one also i can also uh, push this one a little bit up let me select this then i can do it like that so let's come to the next option and it is telling us that we have a line whenever you want to make a line into your publication you can always come to this section and click on it and when you click on it you can be able to draw the line the way you feel you want but as i'm drawing this line you're going to find out that the line is not all that straight whenever you want to make that line straight you'll have to use the shift button in combination with that uh, selection that you have made and whenever i do that it is going to make my line very straight for me and that is it so i can decide to make changes on this line by double clicking on it after double clicking on it i can decide to change the, the style i can decide to increase the weight i can decide to give it a color let's say i want to give it this then i can say okay and other sizes are there and other options can as well work with that line then you can say okay so you see my line has changed so let's now work with another option that we are having here and it is going to be the arrow i need to make an arrow i can decide to hold my button then i hold my shift again to make it as straight if you don't hold the shift button it is going to be in a zigzag form so whenever you hold the shift button it will make it straight and after you release it for more changes you just come double click on it then you can even decide to change uh, the arrow style you can decide to change the style here the weight and so many colors that you can change from that after that you can work with it just like that or you can as well double click on it change the weight and increase it depending on exactly what you want to work with so it will look just like that whenever you want to insert that arrow somewhere you can always modify it and it looks nice for your viewers onto the publication but remember whenever you do all this uh, these tasks you always have to be able to preview what you're doing such that it is always appearing onto one page for example i can come here and say preview and when i preview this information it appears on only one page there are times when people make publications but when they go to that option of previewing this information appears on more than or four pages it is always a better way to always view something before you proceed with your publication so mine is already appearing on only one page so let me continue with the oval if i wanted to make an oval i'll just come and draw the oval there then i can as well double click on it and make the modifications the way i've done for these other sections so another option we are having here is the auto shape whenever you want to put an auto shape you can always click onto this section you can have the lines choose from the different lines that we are having here then we can choose the connectors we can also be able to work with basic shapes for example if i wanted to draw uh, this shape here it is just there for me if i wanted another auto shape and just come to the shapes then i can decide to put this uh, just like that then i can double click on it i can work with all those shapes if i have this shape i can as well be able to work with these other options for example i can give it shadow by doing that or i can decide to choose another like that so it gives you the shadow down here the way you see it then afterwards you can decide to remove this because i don't need them now 
So another option we can have here, okay, we are still on the auto shapes. We can also have the flowcharts. We can also have the star and banners. We can have the callouts and more other auto shapes. So those are enough. We can work with the auto shapes from here. So another thing we have down here is the bookmark. And this is a feature, or this feature helps you to assign a name to a specific point in a document. So you can always click on it. Then you can always decide to give something a name. For example, I want to give this one a name. I can just highlight it, then come to my, let me just highlight something uh, small. Let's say I want to highlight guy. Then I come here, I want to give it a name. I can say, let's say B1, then I can erase, click add. So I've added a bookmark for my work. So it is just here, you're not seeing it as well, but it is there. It assigns a name to a specific point in a document, such that whenever you're looking for it, you can always be able to search for it. So that is a bookmark. Then down here, we have what we call the design gallery uh, object. And under this, we have a variety of options here. For example, we have the ascent box, we have the accessory bar. You just click on any that you feel you want to use in your publication, then it will be able to to go there. So if I come back here, I'm going to be choosing one more option. For example, uh, there are many here, but I'm going to be choosing the one for the borders. And when I click on the borders, at times you want to make a certificate and put a border for you there. So what you can do is to pick a border from here, then you can always use it into your publication. Double click on it. And having double clicked on it, it is going to be given to me just like this. So I can decide to, uh, let me zoom in a little bit, just like that. So when I come here, I can just modify this border by putting it here. Then I can decide to enlarge it here. Then I can decide to uh, make it a little bit smaller here. Then I can decide to make it a little bit smaller or increase it here just like that. So I can as well be able to preview what I'm doing to see what exactly I'm having. So I have my page, it is having the information, then the border is also there. We'll also be able to look uh, at another way we can put the borders apart from that. So apart from the borders, there are other options that you can work with. We have the coupons, we have the callouts, there are many, 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 many other options that you can work with. We have the Macri, we have the phone tear off, we can have the poll quotes and many others. So for my case, I've just worked with the borders. We can also work with the one that you feel you want. So that was the design, the design uh, gallery object. Then down here, we have an arrow that tells us that we can go to the toolbar options. And when I click on the toolbar options here, I can add or remove an object. For example, when I come here, they are showing me all these things are checked. When I uncheck one, it will be removed from the objects here. So I'm going to try one, for example, if I come and click here, I come to the objects, I come and click on word add. So when I uncheck it, it is going to disappear from this section. So that means that you can always add uh, different objects here or you can decide to remove different objects to that section. So let me put it back by coming to the objects then I can say, check it. Then I have another one down here, which is not there. I can decide to put there and it is called the item from the content library. We're going to be working with the content library later because it is somewhere here. Then I'll show you how it works. So I'll come and click on it. Then I can decide to reset the toolbar. So it gives you everything the way you feel you want it. So this is what we call the content library. When I click on it, it shows me that I have no content uh, into the section. I can always decide to add content here. For example, if I want to add content to the library, I can, for example, have this pick, and I always want to add it to the content library. So what I can do for that, I can come to this section here that says add to content library. So I can click on it. It will ask me some basic information about it. For example, if it is going to be business, I can choose a category that I want it to go to. I can choose, let's say, personal. I can choose, let's say, favorite, or I can even customize and add my category that I want to work with or where I want to keep that image so that I can always reuse that image. So I can come and put it under business. 
I can say I want to put it in all, then I can always say this. So when I do that, it is going to come into my content library. So if I decide to remove this, I can always double click on it, then it comes into my uh, page or my publication. Actually, content library is a single location where you can store logos, list of services, success stories, maps to business locations, testimonials, and pictures that you plan to reuse in your marketing materials. So when I plan to reuse something, I can always add it under my content library, then I can always have it there and put it in my publication wherever I feel I want. So that is the content library. So we can close this content library. Remember, we call this one uh, the task pane. It can always help us to move through. For example, if I want to go to the beginning, I can just use these arrows to go back to the sections that I've worked with. For example, I want to change my page sizes uh, from here. Uh, I can just come here and click on change page size. Then I'll just go back here. I put my width, I put my height, then I can even work on the margin guides. So it depends on what actually the question gives you. You might have chosen a size, but uh, after using it, you notice that you wanted to make some changes onto that size. You can always be able to work with it here, or you can even come to the advanced option, come and uh, give it a name, already the name is there. We can put the size, we can change the margin size. You can even decide to either use one page a sheet or you can use multiple envelope email and all the others so it depends on exactly what you want or the question what the question is asking for so let me close this then i close this because i don't want to change my size so i think i'm done with this section so what i'm going to do now is to talk about these two uh, toolbars and i'm going to begin with the first one up here um, the first option we are having here is telling us that we can create a new one. So I've been using this, but I can decide to create a new one. So I will just come automatically to this, then I click on new. Or if I don't want to use this, I'll come to my file, then I use the option that says new. That's why I'm going to spend some time onto this because some of the items that are listed into these tabs are all listed here. So I'll be a little bit faster when I come to these other tabs. So let me just explain them from here. We'll just come and look at the things that are not existing here. We'll talk about them under the tabs here. So let me talk about the toolbar. I've talked about the new, whenever you want to uh, create a new publication for your choice, or you're done with this one, you want to create a new one, you can always come and choose this option. It will give you a new publication and you work with it, then you can always be able to save it later. Then another option we are having here is the open. If I've already created a publication onto my computer, I can browse for it by clicking onto this option. Then they will tell me to look for that publication. Then I can always be able to open it and work with it. So those are now two. We have the new, uh, we have the open, and we have the save. Remember, we've been working with this publication, but we had not saved it at all. So I want to learn how I can save my publication. Of course, I'm going to come to my save option. Then I can look for any location of my choice. For example, I want to save it on my desktop. I'll come and click the desktop. Then I come, I give it a name. Let's say I'm going to be calling it uh, introduction. Introduction to uh, let's say publisher publisher then i can say how am i going to save it it is going to be a publisher file but there are different options you want to save it as an image you want to save it as a png jpg gif you can always choose any plain text you can choose from here the way we chose that publisher template is the same way we can save it from here so i'm going to be using publisher file then I say save. And having saved it, the name will appear on the top here. That's why we call this one the title bar. So if I plan to close my publication, it will already be saved for me. So let me come back here. And if you don't use the save, on the file option here, we can have what we call the save and the savers. That means that there is a difference between save and savers. We'll look at that later. So now another option we are having is the printer. You need to print out your publication. Of course, you'll come and click onto this option. Then it will be able to 
uh, help you in the printing section of your publication. For example, you do that, it sends this publication to your printer, and that's why down here, you see that I've done it twice, then it has sent this one twice to my printer. But I will remove these ones later. So now, but before you use this printer, you can also well first look at what we call the print preview. I've told you that whenever you're designing a publication, you always have to look at something before printing it. Because in some cases, you're going to find out that someone is designing a, a lesser certificate, but when they are printing that certificate, it is displayed on four pages. That means that it's going to print that uh, certificate on four different pages, which is not uh, okay or good for you. You just have to print that certificate when it is only on one page. So what do we do here? We come to uh, always the preview option and always look at something before we can print it. And whenever the size is all that big, you can always come here, change the page size, then make sure that information fits on only one page. Then you can always be able to print your information the way you want. So there are different sections, or there are different pages that you can work with that can fit on only one page. So that is what we call the print preview. Another one here we have is uh, what we call the spelling. So whenever you write something that is known to array, let me say if I want to get a text box, I can get it from here or I can come to insert, I get a text box from here. Those are two different options of the text boxes you can work with. For example, I want to write something, let's say computer guy, computer guy. So this, uh, it is not visible. I can decide to increase the size uh, by coming here. Then I can put it to 18. It is also very small. I can just decide to make it as 28. So computer guy is now visible. Now, if I had made a mistake in this word, for example, I was writing computer, but I missed uh, this, then it will put a wavy color for me. So that means that my spelling is not right. So when I click here and come to my spelling, it will be able to give me the suggestions of the spellings I can work with. For example, I have this, that they are suggesting I can use computer or I can decide to ignore and leave it the way it is. I'm going to be choosing computer, then I can say uh, change, then it will help me and change that word for me into my publication. And now it is telling me that publisher has finished checking the story. Do you want to check the rest? No, I don't want. Let me just end on that one. Then they have changed the word for me. That is how you can work with the spelling. Another thing here is the research. Let me click on it. Whenever I want to, uh, let's say, I want to, to, to get a meaning of a certain word. Uh, for example, I want to get uh, another word that means the same as start. Let me just write start. Then I can decide to search for that. So they have to give me some information that is related to this word. If I don't use start, I can use begin, I can use commence, I can use start off, I can use get going. So that is what we call the research. So we can always be able to search for something from there. The other thing we are having here is the cut. You want to cut something from one either from one page to another page, you can always use this option. And if you have used uh, other applications before, then I think you know how to work with a cut. Let me say I want to cut this one to another page. I have one page here. I can decide to duplicate it into uh, another page. Let me say I want to uh, right click onto this. Then I say insert duplicate. Then it will make for me another another page. So I can decide to uh, let's say delete this one from here. Then I can say to cut this uh, cut this from page two. Then I'll say cut, then I'll come to my page one, then I say paste, control V. Then it comes here. So I've cut it from uh, page two to page one. That is how we can work with a cut option. And it is here. Another option we are having is the copy. If I wanted to duplicate this into two, I can just click on copy the way we see it here. Then I can click here. I say paste. And I'm having the paste here. It is just here. So we have two. If I wanted to make this one, I'll just come and copy, then click on paste again, just like that, so they become two. That means that the paste is going to be helping us to insert those characters, all those images, all those items that we've copied into 
another location. Copying will help you to make a duplicate, whereas cutting will help you to remove that item from its original place to another location. Then here is where we have the add to content library. Remember I showed you how we can work with the content library because I had this image and I wanted it to be under my content library. I can always add it from here. Let me say I have this. I want it to be added to the content library. Then I can just click on it. Then I say add. So they will ask me where it exactly uh, going to be. Then I'll just select anywhere that I feel. Then I say okay. So it has been added to the content library. Now I have two of them. So whenever I want to use it in another publication, I can always just come and double click on it. Then it comes into my publication. So it is just easy like that. Let me just wrap all this because I no longer want to work with them. Uh, let me just click on this. I click this. I select this. I delete them such that I can have some other spaces for working with other characters. So now we are here. For example, I have my computer guide. Let me copy this word again, paste it here, control B. So I'll come and put it here. Let me say I want to remove this other word. It is now computer guy, just like that. Uh, these are two words. I have Henry the computer guy and computer guy. So I can decide to make changes onto this one. For example, I can highlight this. I can make this bold. I can make it italic. I can make it underlined. I can decide to align it to different areas, either to the left, to the center, to the right, and just wide. I can decide to change the font to that one. So I can decide to give it a color just like this. So that is the word that I'm having. It is not fitting there, I can increase this. So now this is what I've made. I want this other word, which is computer guy, to look similar to this one. So what I'm going to do is to highlight this, then I come to my format painter, then I can come and select this one. It will just be similar to the one that I had before. So that is how we can work with the format painter. And another option we have here is the undo. We can reverse the action that we have done. For example, this one, we can reverse this action by clicking undo. It takes away that selection. Or I can redo it or re-execute the undone command and bring that information back for us. So we can undo, then redo that information the way we feel we want. So another option we have here is uh, the bring to front. So now if I have this image and, uh, for example, let me increase this size. When I increase the size, I want to put it here. Now, after putting it here, you're going to identify that it is behind my text. I can decide to work upon this. For example, they are telling me bring to front. I can decide to bring it to front such that it hides the other uh, text that I had. If I want to take it back, I can say send backward. So it goes back, then the word comes on top of it. So there are more options you can work with it. Send back, send, bring forward, and others. So those are uh, different options you can work with. So I can put it aside uh, because I've already worked with it. Now another option we have here is the rotation. I remember I have this image here. Uh, let me just make it a little bit small. Sorry, big. Let me make it a little bit big. And after making it a little bit big, I can decide to uh, make some changes here. For example, I can rotate it. Okay, let me use this one because you're not going to um, uh, see changes about that one. Uh, we can use this one, put it here. Then after putting it there, we can make uh, some different changes onto this. For example, rotate to 90, it has rotated. We come back, we can flip it, we can define, uh, we can just vertical. Just like that, you can decide to make changes depending on exactly how you want it to be. And this is where we will find the rotation. Then another option here we have is the hyperlink. We can use this hyperlink to, let's say, jump from one page to another or make a link from one page to another or from within the same page. For example, if I want to make a link to this word, let me say I want to select this word. After, I'll command click on insert hyperlink. So a hyperlink is like a word or phrase that can transfer to other pages or other sites. So what we are going to do is to click on the hyperlink. We can decide to put within the same document, or you can even decide to use external documents to link to 
for example for me i want to place in the same document i'll click on this then i can say i want to link to uh, let's say page two then i will say okay so when i come here i'll press my control button then i click onto this link it has to take me to page one page two you see i'm on page one but when i come here i'll press my control button it makes that finger the way you see it then i click on it and having clicked on it it will take me to page what page two that is how you can be able to insert a, a link now another one we have here is that we can view information in form of a web page that means that it will open in a browser so if you don't want to open it as a, a publication type here uh, you can as well decide to open it when you're using a web page so it will open your browser then open for you what you're designing but i'm not going to go to this so another option we have here is the columns and we want to see how we can insert columns to our publication for example let me put this one here i get my text box after putting my text box here i can put in some information let's say i can decide put any dummy text here let me just use it as this one just like that so I can copy this, control C, then again, I press down, control V, then down, control V to make it uh, uh, more, just like that. So this is the information I'm having. In case I wanted to put columns here, I'll just highlight this information. And after highlighting this information, I can decide to come to my columns. Then I'll decide to pick the number of columns I want to use. For example, we have column one, we have column two, then columns, three columns, we have four columns and others. So you can decide to pick the columns that you feel you want. And when you come down here, this information has been divided into two columns for you. So that is how we can be able to insert columns into our work. Then we have this, uh, which is the special character, and that is the show or hide. Whenever I work with this information, for example, I get another text box here. I can just drag and draw it here. Then after I can write a word, then I can put some spaces. If they are not visible, I can come to this option that says show or hide. It will be able to indicate this item for me. Let me increase the size for you and you see it. So if it is off, so when I select here, if it is off, you're not going to be able to see this. If I put it on, you will see the spaces that have been uh, living there. So it is called the special character or the show or hide. Then here we have what we call the zooming in and the zooming out. You want to increase the size of your page. Uh, you don't see whatever you're working with. They say it is very small. You can always decide to use this plus symbol to zoom that publication and you will always be able to view everything the way you feel you want. Then if you wanted to reduce it, you can as well click on this option. It can make your publication very smaller and you can as well be able to view it on just a single screen without scrolling up and down or left to right. So that is what we have under the Zoom section. And this option here is what we call the Office Publisher Help. Whenever you want to ask a question, you can always Come and click here. You can always add your question there. Then they can always give you some information that is offline and you can always be good to go. Another option we have here is the drop down arrow and it's telling us that our toolbar options, when we click on it, it can tell us to show buttons on one row or we can even come and add or remove buttons. When we come to the standard, we can have other sections or other options that are not here displayed for us but we can add them there for example when you look here we have all these other options here for example when i click on it again i'll come here and i'll come to the standard you're seeing that we have this but all these options that are displayed there are given for us here so we can decide to put others that are not displayed here for example i'm not having the date and time so what i'm going to do i will come here I'll come down here, then I'll come to my standard. I'll come and add the date. It is there now. I can decide to remove it. I can add it again. I can add the time. I can add the alignment, top, left, and more other options are here. Or I can even reset it to what it had from the beginning. So that is how you can always be able to add more other options onto that toolbar. 
So let me add the time. It is there. I can add the align top. They will all be coming for you just like that. Then another section we have here is going to be working on the text boxes. For example, let me remove this. Uh, let me put this one here and make it a little, uh, let me, okay, remove this one. Again, let me just click on it and click on delete. I insert a new one. Uh, I have this. So I'm going to increase the size. Let's say he is going to, let me make it a little bit smaller. So it has ended there. Now I want to insert another one. Let me just put this one here. So I want to make or create a link uh, from this text box to this, such that if a word doesn't fit here, it can as well just come into the second uh, option or text box. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on it. Then I'll come to what we say, create a text box link. Then I'll come and drag and drop it to the second box I want. So I wanted to write that uh, he is going to school. So I'll leave some space Then I write my school. So you see that it has left the other box, then it has come to this uh, box. That means that we can break that link or we can even try to go through uh, all those to what? Uh, text boxes the way we feel we want. So I can now break it, then you'll see that the word is not visible here. When I increase it in size just like this, it will be showing for me. If I again create a link uh, to this other second box just like that, and I make it a little bit smaller, you'll see that the word will go to the next uh, box. That is how we can create a link between two or more text boxes. Then another option we have here, it is again on the tool bar options. We can decide to work with them the way we have. Just like that, you can add them. The boxes are also here. You can decide to add or remove them or reset the toolbar again for you. So that is the first toolbar that we have worked with. And I think we have exhausted it uh, clearly. Let's go down here on the second toolbar. And they are telling us that we have the publication tasks. And here we can have, uh, for example, if I try to choose something here, for example, let me use this. I have this. He is going to school. And when I select it here, we have the style here. We can either clear the formatting or we can leave it on normal or we can even go for more other options. We can change the font from here. Let's say I want it to be Times New Roman. I want it to be any other font. It can as well be able to change. Then I earlier talked about increasing the size. You can always get the size from here and increase the size depending on exactly what you want your publication to have. Just 72, it is very big. So we can just leave it on 28, just like that. We can make a word ball, uh, just making it thick, just like that. You can make it bend, that is the italic. You can decide to underline it. I want to align it to the left. I want to align it to the center. Let's say if it is just very long, I can decide to align it to the right, or I even make it just fine. Uh, just fine is making something uh, to be aligned to left and right uh, while adding extra spaces between them. So it is just that justification. Then we can decide to put line spacing. For example, let me clear this one. Uh, then I get another text. Let me just get another text box. I delete this and work with another text box. So I'll come and uh, let's say put this. Let me say I'm going to put this, let it go to the second line. Then I can decide to copy this. I can decide to copy this. And after copying it, I can decide to uh, press enter, paste, control V, control V, control V, control V, control V. Now the space between uh, these uh, lines of text is actually closer to each other. We can decide to uh, put line spacing into them. For example, now what I'm going to do is uh, to highlight this information. And having highlighted this information, I can come to uh, the line spacing options. Then I can decide to uh, choose from the general. I can put it either left, center, right, just fine, distributed, or other sections. Then I can decide to come and put some indentation. Then I can put the line spacing either after or before. I can put six 
let me see so whenever i put this information here it will be showing you how it will appear even after here i can decide to increase it so they will show you how it looks like so that is how we have it so some information has been put here and another has been shifted down so we can decide to always put the line spacing into our text onto our page or publication then down here we also have what we call the number link if i wanted to number this one i can just come and say i want to give it a number or if i wanted bullets i can decide to give it the bullets but at times you're given a question whereby you have different numberings are from the ones that you have in here so how are we going to do that we can come and choose uh, them from the format options whereby we can come to the bullets and numbering and when we come here we can always be able to choose the type of numbering that we want to use the format and we can also choose other bullets that we can work with for example if i want to use this i can just say okay then it changes if i wanted to change to another one i can just come back to the bullet then i can even define another character for example i get some characters from here then I can reuse them as my bullets, just like that. So that is how we can work with the numbering. Again, we can change the number by coming to the section. Then I can say numbering. I can decide to reuse the romance. Then I'd say just like that. So it will work for me. Whenever I press enter, it will just give me that. Let me first of all increase it. Let me remove this. Let me increase the size for this. Then it can as well be able to be displayed for me i have henry as roman one then guy as roman two i can say to press enter here then i can increase the size for this for all that information to be displayed so i have three romans if i decide to put blades again uh they will just change for me just like this i need this then i can say okay so that is how we can work with the numbering and the bullet then this side we also have the indent we can increase the indent and we can decrease the indent let me highlight this information i can decide to increase the indent indent is actually the space from the margin here so we have our text box here so that white space from the margin here or from the line here so we can always decide to increase it or decrease it that is the decrease and the increase increasing of the indent then another section we have here is the decreasing of the font now you see these words we can decrease the size apart from uh, using this as this increase and decrease you can as well use these other two options for example one is uh let's first highlight one is increasing the font and one is decreasing so this is decreasing whereas this one is increasing so you can always increase and decrease when you have not gone to this section for the font size so another one here is the fill color in case we have this text box and we want to give it color let me put another one just come here come and put your text box you want to give it some color i clicked on a table sorry i want a text box let me just come and click on it here just select it here then i can always decide to give it a fill of my choice i can give it another fill just like that then another one here is what we call the line color so the line color we can as well choose the line color which is this one to another color of our choice and i say i want a blue so you can always well let me leave it to black because it's the one that is visible you can always choose the line color for your choice then we have the font color i have this word i want to give it a color i can just give it a red from here or kind or i can just come and make a selection here after making a selection i'll come and come to more colors whereby we can come and select a color for our choice we can come to the custom colors uh, by mixing red green blue we can also come to the phantom and choose the different colors we need from this so you can always well work with the different colors here or fill effects you can as well get the fill effects or you need the tint that is going to be there for you you can always choose from the base colors also another option we have here is the borders and if at all we didn't have a border here let me remove this border if we did have this border we would come and get what we call a text box and make a text uh, border here on our page and after making it there uh, we can come to our borders here then we decide either to use this it will just come just like that 
If you want to put in some art, you can as well come, choose the option, come to more lines. And coming to more lines, you can come to this section that says border art. When you come to the border art, you can as well be able to select some different arts or your choice that you can use. You can even increase the weight and just display it like that for your page. After that, you can preview and see how it will look like. That is how our page or publication will look like. So after doing that, we can as well come to this section that is the dash. You can as well put, a, put it as a dash. Any case that you feel you want, it will just change automatically. Then you can also use the arrows in case you wanted to use them, if you at all want to use them. For example, I've selected a line, then I want to use this arrow, then I've used the arrow here. Let me just remove this. Just like that. So this is our arrow. I can select this one. I'll come and choose the arrow. Then it will be just like that for me. It will automatically change for you. Then this one is what we call the shadow. For example, if I have, a, let me say, I get some auto shape. Here I'll get some shapes. Let's say I have this. When I draw this, it will be just there for me. I'll come, then I will can I can just give it a, a shadow. So just like this, it will look like that. Though it's not all that visible, let me remove this and put it in space here. So you're seeing the shadow down here. You can as well decide to uh, use that with the way you feel you want. It will come here. So now you're seeing two of them here. So if I have this and I wanted to, let's say, put some information just like this, I can decide to choose any of these options for that 3D and they will appear just for me like this. So that is how we can work with uh, the second toolbar. In that case, you wanted to add more options here, you can as well come to this option, come and add or remove. You can come and add this or formattings. You'll have many of them. The styles are here, the bold, the line spacing, numbering, decrease, indent, and so many others. Uh, superscript, all caps, small caps, 3D, and others. They are all many here. Single line spacing, double line spacing. You can decide to add them onto that section such so that you can always be able to work with them. Or you can reset it and it goes to uh, how it was in the beginning. In case you had made a mistake, that is how we can add them there or remove them. So I think we have worked with all these two toolbars. So what I'm going to do now is to work with uh, this uh, menu bar. Uh, let me just click on these ones and let them 